Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastriyakal. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum Ache Hey, Kaise Hey Up. And today we're going to be reacting to how North India is different from South India. Yeah. So we, since we've been doing this for a little while, plus um, since my husband is from South India, we do know a few things. Um, you know, a little bit about the difference, you know, South India is more coffee, North India likes more chai, right? Yeah. Um, more rice in the South India, a little bit more chapatis and bread types in the North. Um, you know, even like the Italy's, like uh, Auntie makes, like when we yeah. saw on the food show, they said they're they're completely different how they make them in the South, how they make like them in doses, the North. Like dosas, yeah. Oh, dosas, that's what I meant, yeah. not Italy's. Um, so there are some differences. We know weather differences, like, you know, lungis in the south because it's so nice and hot down there. You know, you can't wear that up in the north. And the dresses as opposed to saris. And so there are, like, some little things that we know. But yeah. she looks like she's been traveling around. And so let's see what she has to say about her differences or what she thinks yeah. is what she's observed. So, all right, let's start it up. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Tribe, Prishia here and I'm sure a lot of you are already saying that she hasn't travelled all over the north and south of India, how would she know what the differences are? But from a little bit of the travel that I have been recently doing and if you've been following me on my social media handles then you would know where all I have been. <laughs> These are a few of the very stark differences that I have noticed. After all, this is just my opinion and my observation. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you in the comments section below as well. All of you from the East and the West, sorry for ignoring you all, but this is about someone else. But I also think that your opinions would be uh, very objective and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Because after all, our friends from the North and the South what they have to say, it just might be a little bit. Just a little bit. Bite. Yeah. To get a scale of the distance between the northernmost state and the southernmost state, it's the distance between France and Nigeria or Canada wow. to central That's Mexico. Huge. So yeah. if the distance is going to be this much, there are bound to be differences even yes. though they belong Mother to the India. same mother. Yeah. Yes, there are major differences, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to food. Mm -hmm. The Churidar yeah. versus the Kanjivaram, mm -hmm. Hindustani music mm -hmm. versus Carnatic music, the lush mountains mm -hmm. of the north mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. south, and plenty of misconceptions like the color of skin. But hey, these guys, they're from the south, and mm. these guys, they're <laughs> so from the north. Really the that. difference yeah. between the two has a historical foundation. And if you take a look at this video, then you can see that the south of India was colonized very few times. The Chola Kingdom and the early Pandya dynasty, they ruled for a close to almost thousand years. Under stable governments, culture, art, architecture yeah, flourished. And yeah. that's why if you look at any of the dance or paintings from India, the older schools were always found in the south. The north, in the meantime, was constantly under attack and different empires would rule and erase the previous empire's contribution. When I talk to people, I find that they think of India's history in very blanket terms of the British, the Mughal, the Marathas, the Rajputs but from this video you can see that India, especially the North, was ruled so by many, many different empires. Yeah. While the Gangetic Plains were fertile, they were also easily accessible through the Khyber Pass. The South on the other hand, equally fertile but accessible mm. only That's by cool. boat. A lot of the boats that did land there, they were merchant boats and not led by armies. With trade came an understanding of other cultures without having to call them masters. Now here's a story that will blow your mind, especially if you've just joined the tribe. People have a tendency to believe that Islam came from the north, but the very first mosque to have been built in India during Muhammad's lifetime was built right here in Kerala. The king of Kerala had heard of Muhammad and set sail to meet him. Even though he didn't manage to convert to Islam, he did promise Muhammad that his people and his followers would have a place of worship right here in the south. 
and that's wow. where the first mosque ever got oh, built in that. India. Yeah, this does. mosque, it still exists in India. So understand that the British did not give us Christianity and the Mughals did not give us Islam, but it's the merchant vessels that brought these religions to Indian shores. Even though the South did get colonized before the North, the British were very focused on Delhi and Bengal. Yes, they did have centers in Madras, but their relationship with the kings of the South was less disruptive than the North. People from the North were constantly moving from one place to another, while those in the South were allowed to stay and their roots were deepened even more. Now we all know what happens to deep roots. It makes for the foundation for a really strong tree. Why is it that Kerala and Tamil Nadu are spotlessly clean as compared to UP, MP or Bihar? It comes from education, it comes from culture and it also comes from having a deeper sense of belonging. People from the south are deeply affected if their natural resources are depleted and that is why some of the jungles from the south are richer and greener compared to the north. The north of India, it has two sides to its coin. Because of the constant upheaval that is taking place, the energy, it's always new. There is a survival instinct and a warrior spirit that does kick in which makes it a little stronger. So compare America to Europe. It's young, new, flashy and always trying to impress. In our case, Hindi movies with its obviously northern influences becomes the barometer for pop culture in India. Yes, southern movies have caught up but in today's day and age, it's still easier to watch a Hindi movie in Madhurai than to try and catch a Tamil movie in Mathura. So I'm going to end this video with two points. I could have spoken about women's safety and thrown a whole bunch of numbers and figures at you. Yes, it would be a very good barometer of a society's progress. But at the same time, we have to understand that Kerala, it was matriarchal. Women over there are much more educated and therefore more empowered. <laughs> but honestly, yeah. this is exactly. another whole topic and it could be a whole video by itself. Because they have more peace, different religions are able to exist with one another and they're also less suspicious of each one's intentions as compared to the North. You could generalize if you wanted to say that South Indians are geeks and North Indians are loud. But in the comment section, let's try and learn from each other. Let's talk about the good and not really focus on the bad. After all, we're all cousins from the same mother. I'm really looking forward to the conversation that is going to start in that comment section below. So she had a lot of more information than I really expected. Yeah, a lot. So I kind of expected more from the beginning, like, um, you know, like she said, like lighter skin in the north, darker skin in the south. But then she showed you pictures of, of actors that were darker that were Bollywood stars and, and lighter that were in the yeah. south. So that part was interesting. But that's kind of what I expected the whole video to be on. And what she did was explain the differences, like why there are such differences. Yeah. Um, and how it came about, kind of. Yeah, especially, like, the different types of weather, the different types of food, the different types of, like, what they wear. Right. But it was interesting for her to say, like, it would be like saying for us. So comparing to us, like, somebody who lives in Canada, their culture. And then in between all that space is the United States. <laughs> so I didn't realize the length, how, big, how far yeah, the top of, I didn't the either. tip of India to the south of India was, that it that it has That's that much huge. difference. And so, of course, you're going to have hugely... Big diversity. Because I feel yeah. like people in Canada's things that they do is different than people in the United States. And in the United States, like she was saying, that she wasn't even going east and west she was just doing north and south kind of a comparison. Here we have like northeast, south, and then west and midwest. And, and so like there's almost like four different cultures. Same like yeah. in India probably. The west and the east probably have their own things that they do differently. Just like the U.S. And then Mexico is completely different too. So I can just imagine... How big a diversity. How diverse. Like, you could probably go down in layers of India, and it probably changed every so many, you know, so far. Yeah. I Yeah, the size of it, I didn't realize. 
how, how big, big India so, was. Yeah. Of course, there's going to be a lot of diversity, which is good. It brings for a lot of good things, not only acceptance, but I think learning that from other people, learning from other people, but then challenge that kind of helps you challenge. Like, like she was saying, Bollywood is kind of on top, but now the Southern um, woods are coming up behind Challenge. and cha- it's challenging. So that because kind of like, helps. All right. North India, no mm, South India's movies are way up here. We need to get up there. Right. Yeah. So it kind of gives you like a starting point. Um, so it helps with that. Too, yeah. I think here, like I said, there's a lot of different, um, like the North seems a little bit more conservative in how they act so thinking like, um, you know, even like Pennsylvania and up through a New England area, so Boston, New York, people seem a little bit more conservative, not as outspoken to talk to you. Yeah. Um, but I think more liberal in their views. And then you go south and people are a little bit more friendly to you, like, oh, kind of like that open door, like friends, you know, welcome you in and talk to you. They're very social. But I feel like their views are more conservative, you know, and the West is a completely different story. <laughs> so it is true, like even from state to state, like here, language, you guys have different states have different languages plus the Hindi language. So I know there's so many 25, at least 25 different yeah. languages is what we learned. So it could be more. And I do apologize if I got that wrong. But here, you know, everybody pretty much speaks English, but what you speak can differ from state to state, too. Yeah. So the South has a little bit more of a Southern draw to it, like how they speak, and the North has a different accent, and the West says different things. So same language, but how they use it is completely different sometimes totally from different. state to yeah. state. So, um, she did an amazing job. She did a really good job, like, explaining the different parts of India and how they're different and why. Right. And bringing it back to how they got conquered. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. I like how she kept showing clips of that. Like, you know, the British came in or the Mongols came in or this group or this ruler was in charge, you know, of most of India or parts of India. But the North definitely had a lot more taking over of different rulers of different people coming in and invading and yeah. I feel like that probably played a huge part into how they how they do stuff like she said some of them are a little bit more stronger because they've had to change and move and they've had different rulers maybe different parties different people coming in and then the south has been able to a little bit settle more so they have a little bit more deep roots like the trees. Yeah. So but yes, she did an amazing job. And so I'll have to check out some of her travel videos as well. And she a lot more for other videos. Yeah. So I hope you guys like this as much as we did. And don't forget to subscribe. And join the wonderful Jan family and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.